Hi everybody, this is Roxy, and I promised I would give my pickled beets recipe. And I thought I'd add my dill pickles too. They're not actually mine, they're my brother-in-law's mom's recipe. And she was this really cool lady from a farm over in uh, western Minnesota that she grew up, you know, cooking and baking for large crowds of like farmers and their um, neighbors and farmhands when they'd thresh or whatever. You know the old story how they all come to go gather and help each other. Um, so anyways, she was an amazing cook. She taught me how to cook her fried chicken and because um, my, you know, Bill's, it's his sister's mother-in-law. But um, he was always like, oh, you got to taste Melba's fried chicken. You got to taste Melba. See if you can get her recipe, you know, after I got these. So I asked her and she said, sure. And she's, um, you know, invited us over on a Saturday. We get there and she's having a big party. Like she turned it into a big party. So it was like my brother-in-law and his wife and kids and then his brother and her and his wife and kid or whatever. And so it was kind of fun. But anyway, so we go in the kitchen to learn how to do her chicken. And I had no clue. I mean, she said she takes out this um, empty flour bag and says, well, you need to keep one. Of and she had a really high-pitched voice. I can't even do it. She goes, well, you need to keep one of these and, you know, make sure you have this to shake your chicken. So she was starting from scratch on how to do it. And we get to the cooking part and she's, you know, I've got, I collect iron, cast iron skillets and whatnot. So I already had one, but she had this huge cast iron skillet. And I'm not kidding. She took two pounds of butter, put it in the skillet, melted it, and that's how she fries her chicken. Then she gets done with that, fries it so far, and I don't even remember because I was just like shocked when I saw all that butter. I kind of shut down like, oh my goodness, you know. Plus it got kind of crazy with all the people there. So I don't even remember how she did the chicken that well. I could probably redo it, but I don't remember how long she baked it. Or I don't remember the salt pepper to flour ratio. Which, that you can kind of fudge. And she put something else in, I don't remember. But I did have her write down, or I wrote down, her dill pickles and her pickled beets. Because everybody raved on about her dill pickles. And when I had them, I was like, these, oh, here they are, they're so pretty. They are the best dill pickle you will ever eat. I'm not kidding. I don't, I've never found a dill pickle on the store shelf that is, like, perfect or great. You know, there's some that are okay, like Gedney's um, dill pickles are, but these are like, you're going to be crying for your mama when you eat them. Or you'll be crying for Melba. So, as you can see, um, she, let me see, what did she say? One or two cloves of garlic buds, but I put in, like I put two in, and then maybe another one, but you'll see how big the garlic ball cloves are. Or buds, whatever. Not the clove. Is that the clove? Yeah, the clove. And then onions. You can put that's kind of, if you like it oniony, put more in. But that's about what I put in. And then as much dill as you can. And um, shove the pickles in. So this recipe is for the beets. Um, <clears throat> this is going to be for. I would say seven quarts. That's what you can put in your canner. Okay, so write down all of this. It's because you can't really see. Six quart, six cups. This is for six quarts. I don't know whether it is right there. Okay, so I don't know where I left off. I'll start over. Six quarts uh, pickles. So you get six out of this recipe. 13 cups of water, 6 cups of vinegar, she said Gedney's 4.5%, but any of the, you know, Gedney's 6 uh, vinegar will work, white vinegar, 3 fourths cup of pickling salt, and you bring all that to boil and boil for 10 minutes. This, any brine that you're making, 
you really need to watch it because you don't want to overboil it and boil it down because it'll get too um, tangy or tart. Um, okay, so then put it while that's happening. Okay, this is how I can. No, I'm going to get all oh, too long. This is how I can. I put all my jars in the dishwasher and run the cycle, clean them. So that by the time, you know, I do that in the morning, then by the time I'm starting the brine, <clears throat> the dishwasher's done, they're all nice and hot. They're not dry, they don't have to be dry, they're just nice and hot. So then when I get done with the brine, I pull out the hot, hot jars. And that's with any canning I do. And then, um, okay, then I put the stuff in. So put in a bunch of dill. Pack in the cukes first. And there's people that snip off the end. I do if it's um, really big cukes because that helps the cucumber soak up the brine. But I've, I don't always do that, so that's kind of kind of up to your discretion, just to, you know, where the stem is on the cuke, snip that off if you like. <clears throat> Add one fourth teaspoon powdered alum to each jar, one teaspoon of sugar to each jar, one to two cloves, you know, me, I do three to four sometimes, of garlic, one slice of onion, and those are yellow onions. Okay, and then you fill the brine to one half inch from the top. I fill it to about there. And get the bubbles out. To do that, you know, you take a butter knife and you put it down the jar and pull towards you. Turn it, put it down the jar inside, pull towards you so all the little bubbles are gonna come up. Do all four sides and then you take a wet paper towel. I can't get that off. You take a wet paper towel, run it across the rim so any anything that got on there, any even if the brine splashed on there, you want to get that off so you get a perfect seal. And also during this time, you're, um, you've got a little saucepan of water with your lids in it to warm those up and get the rubber soft. Okay, so then you pull those out carefully. Don't touch the, the rubber part. You don't want to get any of your germs on it. And then put those on your jars and put your screw bands on. Now she, the first time I did it, she, like I said, was an old farmer. She used zinc lids and I actually had some because I have collect, always have collected vintage jars since high school, which is really weird. But anyways, I was weird. And she would put the zinc lids on, fill her laundry tub with the hottest water way over the tops of the jars and then in the morning drain and leave the screw bands are on the jars if not zinc. But in the, she would just leave them in the, that's how she processed hers was in a laundry tub. You can try that, but I just use a water bath. You know, the big canning kettle. So there's that. Now for my beautiful beets. That's the color. Oh, look at how pretty. This is like eating dirt candy. It is so, they are so good. Like. To me, beets have kind of a real organic taste to it anyway, but these, ugh, it's like candy from heaven. Okay, here's the beet recipe. I usually do, uh, I used to do um, pints, but that's kind of a lot, and you kind of, like, Bill doesn't eat beets or pickles at all, um, so that's a lot of beets for me to eat, unless we have company, you know. Um, so I would I started doing half pints because then I can leave it in the fridge and I I to me when you can stuff it's processed perfectly it's not you know anyways I keep my pickles and beets probably over two months in the fridge after they're opened I've never died all right so here's Melba's beets wash and boil the beets. Leave one inch of the stem on top to keep the color. So, you know, there's that big, all these little things coming out with the leaves. Leave an inch of that. Clip it down to an inch with the, within the beet. Um, peel and, you know, after you boil them, um, peel and cut off stems. Slice or quarter. 
and you can do the brine while you're boiling the beets. Um, and here's a tip. Do not, well, like when the first year I did this, it was cool outside because that's kind of when beets are, you know, ready. And I had the whole house closed up and I was boiling the vinegar like crazy and all this. Bill comes home from work. This was on a Saturday and he used to work Saturdays. And um, he's like, what's going on? And I was like ready to pass out because the, this brine gets really, well, vinegar gets really, really crazy. I mean, I was about ready to pass out from <laughs> So we had to air out the house. Anywho, so make sure you kind of have some ventilation or the window open. All right, so here's the brine. One cup of sugar, one cup of vinegar, and that's the same white Gedney's. Um, it doesn't have to be Gedney's, but get within 4 to 5% vinegar. Um, half cup of water. Half teaspoon of pickling salt, one teaspoon of mixed pickling spices. Um, she said to put them in cheesecloth. I just throw them in because I kind of like. Um, see, like I kind of like that in my beets because it doesn't. You can eat it. It's they're all soft and spicy. But if you want a cleaner beet, you know, put them in a cheesecloth. Um, boil the brine for five minutes. Simmer for 15 minutes. Do not deviate. Um, last year, I deviated because I got distracted. And it boiled, I mean, it quickly boiled the brine down. I don't know why. And they were the tangiest, like, kind of like squint your eye when you're eating them, beets that I've ever made. So I kind of gave a lot of them away. <laughs> My in-laws, like Bill's family, they all love the pickles and the beets. All right, and then, and they were fine with it because I think their um, their uh, taste buds have gotten old. Um, prick the beet like a potato when done. Um, oh, that's just before. That's yeah. I don't bother with that because well, yeah. And then put in the sterilized jar, hot jars. Um, oh, and that's, yeah, that's one thing with this. I don't know if I do it with the um, pickles, but I have had where I put the seals on and the rings. And, you know, if I'm boiling one batch, some of them will start to um, seal. But for sure, these smaller ones will seal. Any kind of um, small relish jar or whatever. If I did small baby pickles in here, with the hot jars from the dishwasher and the hot brine, they will seal themselves. Um, so I usually don't have to um, water bath these or like um, I used to do some really hot pepper dills. Oh, oh, those are so good. They're like, that is like eating candy with a kick. They are so good. They're really hot. And I've, you know, as I've gotten a little older, I'm kind of babyish when it comes to spicy hot. But those hot pepper dills, oh my God, I, it's like you start eating them, they're like little baby pickles, you know, like when they're little, like about that big. You start eating them and you can't stop, even though your mouth is like on fire and smoke's coming out of your ears. They're so good. So here's my two, okay. Oh yeah, jars, enough for two quarts for the, um, pickled beets. So usually I get like a big bunch of of beets like that and I usually have to do two um, recipes of brine you know to get a bunch to get them all and that's how I cut mine up. Little quarters. Oh they're so good. Ooh I gotta go have some today. Alright so I hope that all helps um, and Thanks for watching. Bye.